Hello, my name is Chris McCabe. I'm a poet and National Poetry Librarian at the South Bank Centre's National Poetry Library. And it's been a great pleasure to work on the centenary celebrations for Edward Morgan. We've been working on an exhibition focused on his concrete poetry and his role in the concrete poetry movement. Uh, he really made that happen in the UK. He was a connector of international concrete poets, a communicator of what concrete poetry was and what it could do, uh, and also the creator of the most amazing, intriguing, warm, funny, uh, mysterious concrete poems that we still enjoy today. Um, we can't bring you the exhibition because of lockdown, but we can bring you the four commissions that we put together. We chose four poets who we felt spoke back to Morgan in an interesting way. Uh, Chris Beckett for the dynamism and warmth of his lyric poetry and his visual poetry itself. Uh, Keith Jarrett, who, like Morgan, is the most engaging live performer and the creator of language worlds that we're invited into. Richard Scott uh, for the openness and daringness of his work, um, but also as someone who's engaged with the history of gay culture in the UK. And last but not least, Caroline Bergvall, who, like Morgan before, works at the hinterlands of visual work and textual work and really pushes this, this idea of sound in poetry, um, how far a poem can go as sound and still be a poem, which was a big, big idea in Morgan's work as well. Uh, we hope you enjoy the commissions. Um, we hope you can see the exhibition when it opens in the future. Um, and it really just remains for me to say how much we're looking forward at the National Poetry Library to, to all the new readers yet to discover Morgan's work, uh, to engage with it, to find new things in it, to respond to it. Uh, it's a voyage that never ends. Hello, I'm Keith Jarrett. I'm a poet based in London, and I was delighted to be asked to respond to Edwin Morgan's life and work. One of the first things that I did was just binge read a lot of his poetry because he hasn't had a direct influence on my writing. Although now, having read more extensively, I can see um, how via other poets he has had a significant impact. I really wanted to directly respond to some of his work, so there were two poems in particular that I was drawn to for very different reasons. They're very distinct uh, stylistically. Uh, the first is A View of Things, which is in The Second Life, and it's very repetitive. It has a very repetitive uh, rhythm and structure, and is also really playful, and I wanted to continue that conversation. Uh, the other is Afterwards, uh, which has a very dark energy, it's very surreal in places, and it just resonates with how I'm feeling right now uh, with life under lockdown and with just being surrounded by lots of uncertainty. And so I was also directed to an interview that he did, uh, Power From Things Not Declared, where he talks a lot about his his work as a gay writer, um, where he's not always been able to be explicit about his romantic and sexual desires and relationships. Um, and as the title suggests, um, there's a there's a there's a suggestion that that perhaps um, having to be more oblique and subtle and hint at things rather than be explicit, um, there's perhaps a, a greater power in in his poetry just through just through that through that repression um that as a writer a gay writer in 2020 sits slightly uncomfortably with me um and so i really wanted to grapple with that in my final poem now that we are out while also responding to edwin as a concrete poet um so i wanted um I wanted the poem to kind of resemble two hands clasping each other or, or perhaps pulling apart um, in lots of ways. And myself, I, I wanted to be oblique to some of the references in, in his work. So unless you've read uh, certain poems um, or the interview indeed, um, then you wouldn't necessarily get some of the references that are in there. Um, you know, one of them is just mentioning a, a stain on, on a lover's shirt. Um, and so, yeah, I've just really enjoyed uh, responding, the challenge of responding to Edwin Morgan and feeling in some way that I was communing with him. My poem, Glasgow Green Redux, is, um, I suppose, um, 
experiential in a way. It kind of um, attempts to take the reader into uh, one of Edward Morgan's own poems, Glasgow Green. Um, this is a poem that was published in the early 60s. And for Morgan, I think it was a very sort of uh, crucial moment in his writing life. He felt that he finally wasn't hinting anymore about his sexuality. He felt that he was in some ways maybe being explicit. Um, but the poem had um, an interesting sort of reception. Um, I don't think people realised um, that he was talking about queerness or cruising um, in the way that he was. And the poem went on to be in the O-level syllabus, which I think he was always really surprised about um, for it to be studied at school, um, when in a way he was kind of evoking, um, in his own words, this kind of nightmarish landscape of um, sexuality and, and doubt in the early 60s. So I think my poem tries to take the reader into that world a little bit. Um, I'm kind of going cruising with Edwin Morgan um, and all the while um, the speaker in the poem is kind of questioning this as a valid act. Is it okay um, to have that kind of discourse or dialogue with someone about their sexuality in such a sort of um, explicit way? Um, and, you know, what's the value of that conversation, really? Um, this poem is called Mangoes, and it's in response to Edwin's poem um, called Strawberries. And, um, and I, it's thinking about um, his life as a very public poet, but a very unpublic gay poet. Um, I mean, his poems, even from the, the earliest, for me, are full of gay references, but if you're not gay, maybe you don't pick them up, um, which is a bit like uh, the way that gay men still have to live in uh, Ethiopia, where I grew up, and where I took my uh, partner of 40 years um, to visit in 2007. So this is uh, about that feeling of, of loving something which doesn't love you in a way. Um, so here's, uh, here's my poem, Mangoes. There were never mangoes like the ones that morning, orange, squidgy black, and bursting from their skins on Mickey Leland Road. A stall where fruits like us were all a little rotten. And the fruiterer, a twinkly boy, looked straight into my eyes to take our coins, because he understood us like no one else in Addis Ababa. Even a Batemokria, campus dramatist I ever met, inquired, why are you both so old and not yet married? Or when Hirut, whose poems start, women of the world, unite, says sweetly, what exactly is the business that you partners run? So we stroll mango happy back up to our hotel room, dilating in the altitude, but really just anticipating, and collapse ridiculously sticky on our prim twin beds, sunshine hot upon us like a blanket, and I kiss your mouth, your chin, your chest, thinking of all Ethiopians who wander arm in arm with other men and love them in their way, and some of them who love them in our way too, but secretly would give up more than mangoes, yes, life itself, to go on walking hand in hand with you around the edges of a thousand beds. Edwin Morgan, for me, it's, it's the joy, the joy the joy of life, the joy in life, the capacity to represent that joy through his poetry, but then also the joy in language, of language, how he plays with language, makes it play with him, with us. And to have been gay at the time when he was, when it was illegal for a big part of his life, illegal in the UK, how difficult. And yet trying to let that surface, 
until he then finally came out. But to use his poetry also to let things that are kept hidden, to let them surface, to try and allow them through until you have to burst through. And for this exhibition that I'm so, so proud to be part of, I wanted to stay very close to his work. So I was basically working through his language. Now that we are out, the you engenders new unambiguousness and interlocks fingers in public visibilizes itself, albeit with apprehension, which we can ill afford to lock away with all the unconfirmed bachelors, at least for now, although the laws may uphold us, even when our families may still not. The knot of silence loosens its tense threat, our love unmasks its masculinity, unrings itself from running rings around explicit desire, untucks its own boundaries. Although I think of how a simple cigarette once held another meaning that had to be recovered from the blown ash in the non-smoker's tray, or how mosquito nets obscured the act, or so you believed, until you two were parted. But now we have our pride, What's left to translate, Edwin? After all, we just happen to be men. As our world flattened, like the unwashable stain on his shirt, shall we be repurposed like the city's cottages? This stump, our thumbs, are they all that we have left? I'm not sure if you can really read an emergent poem uh, out loud, but anyway, I'm going to try. Um, and it's called Lion, um, um, because uh, I love his poem. I love Edwin's poem, uh, Hyena, and hyenas and lions are symbiotic, uh, symbiotic creatures. Lion. I am in love. I am whole. A whole owl and ooh owls. Leo, rrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
lighter and lighter, not eternity. That was the time Scotland began to move. Scotland was found on Jupiter, that's true. It was so fine, we lingered there for hours. That must have been a time of happiness. The year was ending and the land lay still. So this is my poem, Glasgow Green Redux. It's in nine parts and it begins with an epigraph by Edwin Morgan. All the love poems which I have published are gay. Glasgow Green Redux. One. A wink within the black. Who is that? Green shadows. A wink then a whistle boiling over. A whispering inside the grass. Who is that? And our cutouts against the gloaming and cigarette glows. A man alive and out way too late, muttering to himself, not one of the meth men, but skinny slides into them and is gone and is into the laurel and who never really was himself anyway, who feels the lack of a shadow on this night, which is green and golden and is not delicate. We are on flesh's whore, and I am with you, Edwin. You cannot be a bystander in this poem. Oh, longing, longing, we go into the swampish sedge.